Principles of Symmetrical Components, Part 4b. In this part, we're going to do a mathematical example of the breakdown of the system phaser to get the positive sequence component, negative sequence component, and zero sequence component. But before we get into it, we should clarify exactly what's going on here so we have a very good picture in our heads. First of all, the red phaser is IA. So think of this as phase A current. The yellow phaser is phase B current, and the blue phaser is phase C current, right? And if they all rotated in the counterclockwise direction, then they would make an ABC phase rotation. So our system phaser is, has an ABC phase rotation, okay? And the positive sequence component also has a phase rotation of the system phaser, so it also is a ABC phase rotation. Negative sequence component is always the opposite as the system phaser. So we can expect this to be an ACB phase rotation. And the zero sequence component, although they all rotate in the counterclockwise direction, same as the negative and positive sequence component, as well as the system phaser, the zero sequence component doesn't necessarily have a phase sequence. All three phasers have equal magnitude and they all have the same phase angle, but they overlap each other. So keep that in mind, okay? So first of all, we're gonna say that IA, which is the red phaser here, that is equal to 1.65 at the angle of 46.8 degrees. And then we're gonna say that IB, which is the yellow phaser, that is equal to 1.32 at negative 67 degrees. And IC, which is the blue phaser, is 1.56 at negative 121 degrees. Okay, so there we have it. So I'm gonna rearrange this so we have more room to work with. So in part four, we learned of the matrix to calculate the positive and negative and zero sequence components based off the system phasers. So we're going to input a one by three matrix first. This is going to be our zero sequence component, our positive sequence component, and our negative sequence component for phase A and that is equal to a three by three matrix, which we define as a inverse in the previous tutorial. So it's gonna look something like that. And then we have to multiply this entire matrix by a constant of one third. And then lastly, we have to multiply the A inverse by the original system phaser, which is a one by three matrix, which equals A, B, and C uh, system phaser. So when we calculate this, we get something like this. So our zero sequence component for phase A, which is right there, um, it's, it's not correct. So let's figure out how we messed up. So our, our zero positive and negative sequence component for phase A does not match up with what the answer should be. So let's see. We probably defined this one of these guys incorrectly. So IA was equal to 1.65 at 46.8 degrees. IB was equal to 1.32 at, looks like there's a negative sign right there. So we missed a negative sign here. So let's put in a negative sign and see what happens. And there you go, I think. Okay, so now they are all matching up. I just missed the negative sign right there, which uh, messed up the entire problem. So, but what we see here is that sequence component is equal to 0 0.53 at negative 57.9 degrees, which is very similar to what we got. The positive sequence component for phase A, or for our reference phaser, is equal to 1.27 at 72.13 degrees, 1.27 at 72.1 degrees, and then our negative sequence component for our reference phaser is equal to 0.64 at 44.1 degrees, which makes sense. Now, it's very, very important to note that when we do this, right, when we take the inverse of the A matrix and we multiply everything to get the positive, negative, and zero sequence component, what we get is our reference phasers, which we define as phase A. All right, so we get zero sequence component for phase A, positive sequence component for phase A, and negative sequence component for phase A. If we want to calculate the rest of the phases for the symmetrical components, here's what we have to do, okay? So let's start with zero sequence component. We know that the zero sequence component is equal to that, right? 
And we know by principles of symmetrical component that the zero sequence component for phase B is going to equal the zero sequence component for phase A because they are all equal to each other, right? Similarly, this is what we're going to get for phase C. So this is what we get for zero sequence component for phase A, B, and C, right? They all have the same magnitude and they all have the same phase angle. And then for positive sequence component, this is what we get. 1.27 at 72.13 degrees. This is matches this, right? So positive sequence component for phase A. So this is phase A. And then this yellow here is phase B. So if we wanted to calculate phase B, well, we could simply take phase A, right? Phase A and then rotate it 240 degrees. So we could multiply it by the A superscript 2 operator and this is what we get, right? 1.27 at 47.9 degrees, which matches our positive sequence component for phase B. Similarly, for phase C, we could take the positive sequence and rotate it by 120 degrees and we get 1.27 at negative 167.9 degrees. All right, so for the negative sequence component, this is what we calculated. 0.64 at 44.1 degrees, right? For the negative sequence component for phase A. Now, if you wanted to cal calculate the negative sequence component for phase B, we just take phase A right here. So here's phase A, here's phase B, right? So we just take phase A and then we multiply it by the A operator, which would effectively rotate this by 120 degrees. And here's what we get 0.64 at 164.1 degrees, which matches up. And then similarly for the negative sequence component of phase C, which is the blue, we have to take phase A and rotate it 240 degrees. So we take phase A and then we rotate it by 240 degrees. And here's what we get 0.64 at negative. 75.9 degrees and there you have it so in this tutorial all we did was we defined our system phasers right ia ib and ic and we use our a inverse matrix which is one third times this matrix here and we multiply that by our system phasers ia times ib and times ic and what we got was the zero sequence component for phase a positive sequence component for phase A and negative sequence component for phase A. Now it's important to remember that these here are symmetrical components for phase A, okay? To get phase B and C, we have to rotate phase A accordingly based off the principles of symmetrical components and get phase B and phase C symmetrical components that way. And this concludes our tutorial. Now, if you have any questions, there is a forum link on the bottom of this video. Please click on that and ask away on the forum. If you haven't subscribed already, please click on the bottom right corner of the screen to subscribe to this channel. This video was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive.